Hello, this is Paul Shearer with InformedCIO.com. Today we're going to be taking a look at Microsoft's new Windows Server 2008 operating system, specifically focusing on some of the disk management um, features that are in this new uh, operating system. So first thing that we're going to do is go to the Server Manager console. This is where most of your system administration uh, functions will occur within this release of the OS. We'll expand out storage and click on disk management. It's going to show us a list of all of our disks that are currently available. Our C drive is 8 gig in size and then we have four 2 gig partitions uh, labeled disks 1 through 4. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to take disk number one, right mouse click on it, and create a simple volume. This is bread and butter functionality that's been in Windows for a long time. We'll create it as our E drive, and we'll perform a quick format on it. And in just a couple seconds, it should be done online and available. So if we go to Windows Explorer, There it is, our E drive. We'll do a properties and two gig in size. Going back to server manager, we have decided that you know a two gig volume is really too small for our purposes. We need more space. So we're going to take advantage of one of the new Windows Server 2008 features, which is the ability to extend volumes. I know some of you diehards out there are immediately crying foul, saying, wait a minute, I've been able to expand volume since Windows 2003. You know, I just go into the disk part utility and I can do it all from there. Well, technically that is true, you can. But let's face it, disk part was an incredibly clunky tool. In uh, 2008, it's all wizard driven. We go in, we're going to pick the unallocated disks that have free space on them, and we're going to add them to our, uh, to our volume. It's going to come back with a warning telling us it's got to convert these from basic to dynamic disks. We'll say yes. A background process is going to run, and it's done. If we go to our E drive now, look at properties, you'll see it's 8 gig in size. So now that we've allocated all of the space, we really started thinking better of it. Uh, you know, 8 gig was really overkill for our particular application, so it would be useful if we could remove some of the space. Well, we can. Right mouse click, say shrink volume. Now it's going to default in the maximum amount of space that can be shrunken from this volume. So we'll go ahead and click shrink, and as you can see, disks 2 and 3 are now free. Disk 1 is still allocated, as well as 51 meg of disk 4. Now, why it's still using that small chunk of disk 4, I'm really not sure. I'm hoping that this is just a bug in the uh, current Release Candidate 1 version of this product, and is something that's going to be fixed before it goes to uh, GA in uh, February. Uh, I would hate for them to tell us that this is a feature. You know, if this were a uh, situation where these disks were being presented on the SAN, and your goal was to take disks 2, 3, and 4 and remove the zoning, um, as soon as you did that, your E drive would break, because part of it is here on disk 4, and it would be gone. So far, we've just looked at creating volume sets and growing and shrinking them from within disk management. Typically on any server that has fairly hefty disk I.O. requirements, you're not going to want to use a volume set or you're not going to want to use a uh, spanned volume. What you're going to want to do is create a stripe. Now with a stripe, the, uh, you'll get one drive letter assigned, but the data is going to be written across all of the disks simultaneously. So one block will go to disk 1, the next block goes to disk 2, the third block goes to disk 3, 
back to the beginning. This gives you much better disk I.O. performance. So we're going to go ahead and create one here. A uh, new striped volume. Once again, it's wizard driven. We're going to pick three hard drives for our initial stripe. We'll assign it as the E drive and we'll perform a quick format. It's going to convert them to dynamic and in just a couple seconds we should have our stripe completed. So we'll go to Windows Explorer and it's not there yet. There it is. We do properties we see it's 6 gig in size. Now we decide that we want to take our stripe and grow it only to discover the ability to extend and the ability to shrink um, drives or volumes is only a feature available with simple volumes and with spanned volumes. You cannot do it with stripes. Um, this is extremely disappointing because stripes are really the bread and butter of you know those systems I was talking about with high I.O. characteristics. If you've got a database server, if you've got an exchange server, uh, if you've get, really got any t uh, multimedia server uh, serving up a lot of video content, you're going to want something with very fast disk operations. And all, all of this nice functionality that, that they've added for you know extending and shrinking is really not going to buy you anything in those particular scenarios. Um, if you need the ability to add and shrink stripes, you're going to have to go with a third-party product such as Veritas Storage Foundation and use its volume manager to, uh, to basically handle these disks and disk groups and give you that type of management functionality. This has been Paul Shearer with InformedCIO.com. Please visit my website and please visit my sponsors. Have a great day. Bye.